Hello, everybody. Greetings from uh, the Bretos Grotto. I'm uh, a special shout out, by the way, to Jimmy Conrad, who reminded me I needed to record this here on my YouTube channel, which uh, if you haven't subscribed to, do it right now because I'm going to come in hot. This is my recap, slightly delayed, from USA Mexico, which played last night, MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, New York, adjacent. Firstly, I'm wearing glasses and a hat because the USA performance, quite frankly, drove me to pour a couple scotches. Instead of the two fingers, I kind of went three fingers. It was that kind of night. Very, very difficult pill to swallow. But anyway, let's let's be real about it. Again, it's uh, still away, a year away from World Cup qualifying. This is a process. This is a coach finding things that would work. There was actually a 10-minute span there where I even tweeted. I go, this looks really good. They were hitting the ball around. They were getting to Christian Pulisic. They were passing. They were getting a couple shots on the Mexican goal. And as soon as I put a full stop on that tweet, Mexico scored. I have had an incredible knack of being a, uh, a uh, habitual bad tweeter, bad timing tweeter. And this was another case in point. By the way, glorious day here in Redondo Beach. So after that, it all fell apart. Clearly the USA were rattled. But let's start from the beginning. And I think there were a lot of concerns with the lineup. With the roster announcement, there was a lot of optimism. Excited to see who I think will be the fullback combination when, if, if the USA make the World Cup. And I really, truly mean if. We cannot just assume it's going to happen, especially getting blown out by Mexico at home, which never used to happen. Once in a blue moon. But Serginio Dest and Reggie Cannon, I'm very excited for. Had their moments, and then they kind of <laughs> fell in their shell like everyone in the U.S. team did. But that's that's more uh, a product of the team. Uh, Jesse Zardes and Will Trapp. Again, not to be blamed for this game, but the fact that they were in the lineup, you know, again, makes your head drop because I don't think either one of those are long-term options, especially when you bring in Josh Sargent. This is not a uh, original thought by any means, but when you see Josh Sargent, he's scoring for Werder Bremen. This is his moment. Even if he doesn't start, you bring him in the 65th minute. I, I, I assume he's going to start the next game, but why... Why not put him in a situation which clearly this was more than a friendly? I've been watching friendlies all all week on these international dates, and they don't have that fire and brimstone that USA Mexico does. And that's the kind of situation that you cannot duplicate. So put him in the deep end of the pool. I truly believe opportunity lost. So Jossie Zard has got a 65 minutes, and we'll, we'll see what happens next. But uh, there, there are a lot of question marks in the lineup. Then the play. There's this uh, new phrase that uh, I think is going to give people nightmares that follow the U.S. men's national team. It is playing out of the back, which is the very hip thing. It's beautiful. It's, it is encouraging beautiful football, which we all want to see. Goalkeeper hits a defender. Defender connects the midfielder. They're off and running. It requires patience. It requires a, f a good form. And it requires precision. And the U.S. did not have any of that. And they kept putting their foot. If they didn't play out of the back, and I'm not saying anything original, uh, I think the Fox coverage. By the way, the Fox coverage was really, really good. So all the guys uh, and girls, Katie Witham, John Strong, Stu Holden, Alexi Lalas, my my plus one Ian Joy, and Marisa Du, congratulations on becoming a father. They did an excellent job on this coverage. I think Fox did a really nice job in a tough situation where you have to be real and critical of the U.S. But playing out of the back, if they didn't, follow that strategy they probably lose this game one zip by the way it was three zip and likely could have been five or six nothing <clears throat> facts mexico looked beautiful on the counterattack. they punished the u.s tecatito tecatito corona looked like he had too many tecates because he kept hitting the ball over the crossbar that's a problem <sighs> all right so now we move on and the game is falling apart and this is what comes into my my head obviously frustration and patience still has to be used here. Patience. But U.S. soccer has played this all wrong from taking a year to announce a coach. 
in that year saying that the coach needed to have a working knowledge of English. English. Meanwhile, Tata Martino, who I know was a gift to American soccer. He was a gift. He was dropped here in our backyard. Tata Martino is a top 10 coach in the world, club or country. A gift dropped here in Major League Soccer where he excelled. There for the U.S. soccer to grab him. And they did not because he didn't speak English. I'm not saying Greg Halter is a failure or, or he may not be the right guy. I'll still, I'll still stand by Greg and give him that time. But Tata Martino was a present under the Christmas tree with beautiful wrapping paper. What's up, bud? And um, we didn't take the gift. We said, we don't want that present. No Christmas this year. No, Tata Martino is doing some wonderful work in Mexico, and I, 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 I would imagine Mexico might finally get the quinto partido, the fifth game in the next World Cup. They look great. So U.S. soccer put their foot in that. Not, not necessarily by not hiring Tata Martino, but not vetting that whole process and get, get, giving him a real sniff and not ruling him out because of a certain thing. Bad. This is the problem. All the things I've said are issues in their own right, but this is the major problem. We are in an echo chamber. Me, Jimmy Conrad, Taylor Twelman, everyone who talks U.S. soccer, we are now in an echo chamber because... The outside population in the United States, who just saw the women's team win the World Cup, and the women's team is growing uh, in importance day by day, and it's not a USA men versus women, not at all, although it has been mapped out in some ways uh, in the, uh, the national landscape. But us in the echo chamber talking about U.S. soccer, nobody out there cares. Nobody out there cares. USA soccer does not resonate. People see USA Mexico, they'll watch. They're not watching anymore. They're not. There's a huge malaise in place. That is the biggest problem I have with what happened Friday night at MetLife Stadium. The masses are eh, not interested, and that's bad for me. I'm still proud to be American, where at least I know I'm free. Lee Greenwood, what do you think about that? I will, I will stand by it, but it's bad for me, it's bad for U.S. soccer, it's bad for U.S. soccer media, it's bad for everyone who covers this sport because advertisers, uh, man on the street, don't care. And now it's going to become a joke again. Not even a joke, it's not, it's not going to resonate, which I think is even worse because if a joke, it means someone's kind of paying attention. They don't even notice the joke. So uh, I apologize to bum you out on, a, a, on your weekend, but... This is full time and I speak the gospel. Subscribe to my YouTube page so you can get jack good stuff like this. I love you all. And remember, this is the greatest country in the world.